it's working good morning everyone sorry about that i don't know what's going on here at the farm today it's telling me i have good connection um but it wasn't working so welcome everyone happy canada's agricultural day um so my name's romy my husband and i here farm at circle r and we have a sheep and chicken farm so I just uh, flip this around and give you a quick little tour and you're welcome to ask questions anytime. You can also leave questions in the comments. If you want to follow me personally um, on our farm Instagram or Facebook, we're at Circle R Lamb. So check us out there. Well, this flipped around. So this is home for us. We are in Southern Ontario and we're pretty lucky to live in this this spot here we farm about 150 acres and um, have about 800 ewes so ewes are mother sheep and we produce about 2,000 lambs a year as you can see there's nothing exciting going on right now but in the summer we grow a lot of corn and hay and the corn and hay is harvested and we're storing that in the silos to feed the sheep so to feed the sheep, we test all the feed and we have a thing that makes rations for us. And then each group of sheep gets different feed based on what their needs are. So like that there, that's haylitch, that's chopped up alfalfa and grasses. And we let it out of the silos. It gets scooped up with the skid steer and put into that mixer. I'm not gonna go into that barn because I can't get Wi-Fi there, but I'll give you a bit of a peek here. This is our old barn. Our family is actually celebrating 100 years on this farm this year, so that's pretty exciting. We took over from my husband's grandparents. So these are some of the critters in here. These are the rams, those are the, the fathers. And there's some of the mamas there, so that's our old barn. There's our sheepdog, Poppy. She helps herd them sometimes. And we've also got some outside. So those mamas are actually due to have their babies in March. So we're looking forward to that. They'll, uh, they'll be moving over into our new barn in a few weeks after they have their vaccinations and get sheared. So we'll head on over to the new barn because that's where most of our critters are. So we were lucky enough, we did a lot of planning and uh, we put up this barn a couple of years ago. And this is also where we've got the baby lamb, so that's really exciting. <coughs> so the breed of sheep we have, they are Dorset and also some crossbreds. Hi Caitlin, thanks for watching. So these are some of the, the mums with lamb. So we're raising our sheep primarily for meat. Um, we also do sell stock to other farmers, um, but for the most part, Ontario lamb is raised for meat. Um, there are some breeds of sheep that are raised specifically for milk um, and some also specifically for wool, but for the most part then most of the sheep also grow wool. So these girls were sheared before they lambed and they get sheared at least once a year. So it's important for us, especially in Ontario, um, that we give them shelter, especially in this winter. And because we have lambs born year round, we need to make sure that the lambs are all nice and warm as well. Let's come and say hi. So these guys are about four weeks old and they grow really fast. Good morning. So we will wean these in about four weeks. When they're about when they're about eight weeks old, these guys are eating enough of their own food that they are ready to graduate to the other barn to be either market lambs or replacement animals. I'll show you what the lambs eat. So when the lambs are little like that, we have um, feeders down at the other end where they can eat, but those little lambs eat special protein pellets like this. And these mamas here really balanced for them. That's corn, hay, there is dried distiller's grains in there, and um, whole corn, and also vitamins are really important for these guys so they stay healthy. 
Oh, they're always hungry. Does anyone have any questions? I did write down a list, so I will try to answer the stuff I have written down as well. These use here, they are going to be bred soon to have their next set of babies. And over there, there's also another group of mamas that are due to lamb in May. So we always kind of have groups floating through each of um, the production cycles. Hi, Lori. There's our sheep. Uh, we'll head over to the wool shop now and I'll show you some of the cool stuff we do with wool. So when we built this barn, we uh, add a little wool shop on and this is also where we sell some meat. So I'll just show you guys this. That's some different different cuts of lamb. And keep an eye out for Ontario lamb in your grocery stores and Canadian lamb if you're watching from somewhere else in the country this morning. So here's some of the wool stuff that we're doing. And I'll show you guys. The yarn haircut is like you getting your haircut. And we call it shearing. And we have a professional... Oh, I'm back. All right, we'll try this again. Let's see if this will balance. So the shearer will come in and shear the sheep and he's really amazing at that job because that's a really hard job to do. And then we get our wool. So this is wool right from the sheep. And we get it spun into yarn, it gets washed and then it gets brushed. So all the little fibers end up lining up and then that gets spun into yarn. So when they all line up, let's see if I can do this with just two hands. It gets twisted, twisted again, and that's basically how you make yarn. Hi, Christine. Thanks for watching. I'll turn this around again and I'll show you some of the things we make with the wool. So classic wool socks, that's always something everyone loves. And things like hats and scarves, that's some of our finished yarn. And here at our farm yarns so I use different plants and things like that to get some of the colors so it's pretty cool the different things we can make with wool and sheep are pretty amazing creatures that they can feed us with a nutritious high quality protein but also if it's a milk sheep they give us milk and they also give us wool so sheep are pretty amazing creatures that way that they're taking plants that um taking plants that we as humans can't eat and turning it into healthy food that we can all right we've got a question from amy is it good for the sheep when you shear them absolutely um, sheep continuously grow wool just like you always grow your hair so at some point it does need to get trimmed so our girls usually get sheared about every 10 months so take a little bit of a closer look so these girls have about one to two inches of wool on them and it will be about four to six inches long when we shear them it keeps them nice and clean and comfortable hi Lana all right another question Michael what made you grow your farm so big so the reason we have such a large flock is actually so both my husband and I can stay home and farm full-time so it's a bit of a economies of scale if you will um, 
we actually just are both home full-time since last summer so that's really exciting for us um, it gets really tricky there's a lot of farmers where someone has to work off the farm and have an extra job to support that farm but um, we've been really lucky that we've been able to do this and both be home full-time and farming Any other questions? Have we got any school kids watching this morning yet? It's just fun to watch them too. And this mama here, she is an awesome example. Actually a bunch of them. Sheep have four stomachs. So their main stomach is called the rumen. And in that room, and there's a lot of awesome bacteria that digest the grass that they eat and the plants. And in their rumen, it'll float around in the rumen sometimes. They regurgitate it and chew that cud. They keep chewing until it's swallowed, and then they'll bring some more up again. Perfect example. Thing that humans can't, so that she can make milk for that lamb and then that lamb can help feed us humans too or provide us with wool or milk. So typically we are, um, these guys, he's, oh, I don't know, 30 pounds. So the average lamb is about 10 pounds when it's born and we market our meat lambs at about 100 pounds. So they go, and they grow really fast too. Question from Alana. How many good ewes do you need to, <laughs> Oh, that's always the magical question. How many ewes do you need to uh, <laughs> have an income? It really all depends on the farm. So speaking, I know there's some farmers watching, so speaking to farmers, it really depends on your operation and your cost of production. Um, each farm is going to be a little different. So um, we have about nine, eight, nine hundred ewes now, but we also have um, a small chicken flock. So that helps as well. So it really depends on the situation. Question from Cam. Do I have a... He's not out today. I do have a favorite one right now. We had one of these mamas. She had four babies and she doesn't have enough milk to feed those four babies. So I've got a little bottle baby. Come here, buddy. Come here. He'll come and jump out. So I guess he's my favorite right now because he comes to visit me. Come here. Can you come say hello? Come here. Come. There we go. Can you say hello? So we call him Dragon. <laughs> so it's always fun having ones like this around. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, we don't have too many favorites just because we have so many. Um, but you'll notice actually, you see that each sheep has a little yellow ear tag. It's got a little microchip in it. And when each lamb is born, they get weighed and I write down who mum is. I have recorded who the dad is um, and we weigh them. We keep track of all their information. So all of these girls have one of those little yellow tags and we know exactly who their lambs are, who their family is and that kind of thing. So it really helps uh, keep records straight and we know who everyone is, even though they might not have names, we know who they are. Right, buddy? All right, we have another question. We don't really grow any cash crops here, Caitlin. Um, most of it is used to feed the sheep. Um, because we have so many ewes as well, we use most of our land for growing the feed for the sheep and then buy in extra straw for the bedding. And a question from Mercedes, why do sheep have short tails? So sheep are naturally born with long tails. So there's one right there. And when they're a day old, um, we actually dock some of them. So the reason we dock is it helps keep them clean when they're older. So if I know I'm keeping that lamb back um, as a replacement, so if that's gonna be a mom or a dad when they get bigger, um, that shorter tail just helps keep them uh, keep keep them clean a little bit better, and it doesn't really affect them. Um, a sheep's tail is actually not 
quite like a cow's tail. They don't swap flies with it or anything. Um, so it just kind of dangles there, but we do um, make sure that we dock that properly and follow the Canadian codes of practice. There, well, I hope I've answered everyone's questions. Oh, why did we decide to start in sheep? Well, sheep are the best, really, aren't they? Um, when we took over the farm, it was actually a mixed operation. And we used to have pigs and cattle here too, but um, uh, the barn needed some renovations and we had just a few sheep to start with. So when we decided to renovate the barn, we sort of picked picked sheep as our as our main animal to keep around and we've grown from there. The joke was always that one day we'd have a thousand sheep and uh, here we are. Hey buddy, we'll put you back. And go play with your friends. This is probably one of my favorite parts of the day. It's when everyone's quiet, they've had their breakfast and they're just snuggled up in their straw being comfortable. And everyone's chewing their cud, so if they're chewing their cud, I know they're making milk and they're happy. Uh, let's see, what else do we need to talk about? Um, so this barn was designed specifically for sheep. Uh, we've got curtains that go up and down automatically based on uh, temperature and wind and that kind of thing. We've got water in here, water, fresh air. Those are probably almost more important than good feed for sheep. Uh, but good feed for sheep is key. Another question from Mercedes, do I send our sheep out to pasture? So most of ours actually are indoors or housed all year, um, simply because we need protection for them, especially now in the winter. And um, those lambs need that protection and we're lambing year round. So we actually can't send them outside right now because there'd be no feed out there. Caitlin, can you take us through lambing? So yeah, we don't have anything set up for lambing right now, but when we're set up for lambing, um, there will be no lambs in here. It'll just be the mamas that are due. Uh, between the green water bowls there, those gates that are left, they're actually set up into little, um, we call them a claiming pen or a maternity pen. So a ewe will have her lamb out in the main group we take that lamb and those new lambs and that mum and put them into one of the little pens. It's got water in there and we feed them in there. Uh, we make sure that those lambs are nursing, that mum has good milk supply, that mum is eating. Um, we do the processing. So processing, uh, I mean, I, I record the lamb, I give them their little tag and everything like that. And usually a good mom, all she needs is 24 hours in her special little claiming pen and they get moved into smaller family groups. And usually about a week, when the lambs are about a week old, um, I put all the, la the, the family groups together and this is what we end up with, is these big family groups. And everyone knows um, all these lambs and mamas know who's who by smell and sound. So each lamb will be able to go and find and get its drink of milk. They have a really distinct ba each of them so they can find each other. Ooh, another question from Elena. Have I ever thought of milking sheep? I let my lambs do that. I call my lambs the little milk tanks. Um, and we'd actually need a different breed of sheep if we wanted to raise them for milk. How many babies do we time? So this group here, we averaged about 1.8 lambs per mum. Um, we do have another breed. Um, they're actually gonna be lambing in the next group, I believe. And they actually have a few more lambs. So the other breed of sheep that we have here, they average about two 2.5 lambs born so a little bit of a, a different breed and a little bit um, extra work at lambing looking after some extra babies um, sometimes we do have the um, bottle babies with those mamas that have more than two lambs because if they can't feed two lambs um, we still make sure that that third one has a good go like you eh buddy you're gonna be the star of the video yes 
Hi, Sandy. Sandy's watching too. If you guys don't follow Sandy on YouTube, Sandy is sheepishly me, and she's got a YouTube um, showing her sheep farm, and she actually does quite a few things like us. So, if you want a good uh, good YouTube channel to watch about sheep, go check out Sandy too. And put you back again. So there we go. Does anyone else have any other questions? I'm not sure how long I'm supposed to be on here. Um, but we do have some other um, farmers coming up later today. So make sure you keep an eye out for those. Another question. Do you put your bottle babies on a nanny? Um, so Tom, sometimes um, it does work out that say if a mama has one lamb, I can put another one with her. It's a little tricky because they're very sensitive to smell. Um, so you kind of have to trick them into uh, taking that other lamb. Or um, we give them a bottle and we actually also have a, it's a, a milk machine. So it mixes the milk and um, it automatically keeps that warm and keeps it mixed. So we will train lambs on sort of the milk machine and they will have sort of an artificial mama. <laughs> Lori says that little oh there he's out again the little dragon would make an awesome bellwether yes I think he would make a great bellwether we might have to use him for that anyone who doesn't know what a bellwether is is a uh, it's basically a friendly sheep you put a bell on them and because they're friendly they can help lead everyone around where you want them to go Ooh, another tricky question from Alana how many sheep did we need before we were able to build the barn? Um, we were at about 400 ewes before we decided to jump. Um, and then this barn has allowed us to double the flock. But again, that might depend on a specific farm, a specific person, and a diff specific management system too. And they're always fun too when they jump around on everyone. Yeah, you better get back in. There's always a few that escape. I figure they're the smart ones because they have figured out how to get out. <laughs> he is noisy, isn't he, Crystal? If you would just stay in, you'd be with Mama. You wouldn't be searching for her. This barn's pretty awesome because they can find their own way back in. In our old barn, we also always had to help them back in. And eventually they learned that uh, they can't get it. I think I time is about up and I need to sign off yes comment on this video um, or with farm and food care uh, follow me circle R lamb on either Instagram or Facebook I'm always happy to answer questions um, and as always remember to ask a farmer because uh, we can show you what's going on Another quick question from Mercedes. How often do we clean the barn? Um, this barn, usually about every other month, every eight weeks, we usually make sure that before we have any baby lambs born that these pens are really nice and clean. Um, keeping them clean and dry uh, definitely helps for healthier sheep. And then down at the far end, um, those doors open up and we have storage out there for all the manure. It gets composted and then we spread it on the fields and it helps make feed for next year there you go thanks uh, for following along everyone and happy canadian agriculture day